Okay, in this video I want to create an introductory animation that will happen before the website shows up. So to do that I've got a bunch of graphics that I need to import into Flash. I've changed the background to black. Okay, I've got a default setup here. Window, Workspace, Classic, and I hit Reset, I hit reset Classic so that you could see the default workspace. Next thing I did was my website, I'm going to have it created for uh, 1024 pixels wide and 768 pixels tall. So just click edit here and you can set the dimensions, the width and height of your website. You can also set from right here your background color and your frame rate. My frame rate's at 24 frames per second. So if you want to follow along, those are my settings. Okay, I'm going to import some graphics here. In Photoshop, you can see here I've got some images that I'm working with here and um, I've got these images and I need to get these images into uh, Flash. Okay, I've also got some other things too, so we'll import some of those images right into Flash. This is Photoshop right now, so I'll close that and I'm just going to say File, Import, Import to Library. Alright, it says what files do I want to import? Okay, I've got everything for this introduction I've got in a folder called intro. And you can see here I've got these JPEGs that I'm going to import in, right? So that's pretty easy. To import the JPEG, I just double click on it right here. And now I've got that in my library. Alright, but another thing that's pretty cool is I want to import this. I also want to import to my library this Photoshop document, which has the um, logo for this company uh, created by Shannon Whittle and maybe I should just open this up in Photoshop to show it to you. Let's see here. Alright so here it is and you can see here this is um, the logo designed by Shannon Whittle. She let me use this for this video and you can see here she's got everything in layers right and what I want to do is I think I might want to import this into this flash file also in layers so then maybe I could animate these items separately. I could have them fly in or kind of fade in and then play with a logo treatment maybe have it you know flip around you name it. So what I want to do is I'm gonna um, I'm gonna import this a couple times and one time I'm gonna import it I'm gonna import it all in separate layers. So in flash I'm gonna import this guy right here Alright, and instantly I get a dialog box when you import a Photoshop document to Flash. How do you want to import it? And let's see here. So, it says here that for each thing I can highlight the layer. And do I want to import it as a flattened bitmap image or create a movie clip for it? Or however do I want to do it? And, you know, I've only played with this a bit. Um, so I'm not quite sure what's the best, but one thing I have experimented with, sometimes it's better to import these things one layer at a time. Okay, um, so let's see here. I think what I'll do is I'll create a movie clip maybe for each item. Maybe I'll save some time with that. So I'll create a movie clip for this one, and for this one, and for this one, and for this one and for this one. Okay, and we'll see how that comes in. We'll click OK, and it's going to try to import all those things into my library. And I go to the library now, and you can see here that here's the Photoshop document, right, and also a folder with assets inside of it. And you can see here that each thing has been brought in in separate layers. If we take a look at one of them, let's take this one for instance and see what kind of quality we got out of that import. You can see that it came in pretty clean. So I'm pretty happy with that. That looks pretty good. And it's a movie clip. All right, it says movie clip here. So I'm ready to animate this right off the get go. I'm just going to delete that from the stage. Okay, for this intro animation, it's time to add our first animated object. We've imported some graphics into our library and we're ready to go. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to grab this one right here in the group folder. I'm going to click down until I get to this bar. It's right here. And I'm going to drag this bar to the stage. Okay, it drops right in. And uh, I need your move tool. Okay, so there it is. 
and I want to do an animation for this one right here right so that's what I want to do is is do an animation for this so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'll say I want to animate this guy in I want him to fly in let's say and then I'll add some extra stuff to him to make it cool so first thing I'll do is insert motion tween and so after you do an insert motion tween it gives you a keyframe and then some frames and the playheads at the end here it says well where do you want to end up it basically I've got to set the ending point and I want the ending point to basically be almost in the same place so in other words I need to move it now to where I want it to end up and I want it to end up let's say right here okay so now if you were to play this animation you'd say control play and it just goes from there to there well that's cool but not exactly what I wanted so what I'll do is I'll move the playhead back to the beginning to the first frame and then move the bar over let's say to here and so now if I hit control play he moves from there to there well now I'm at the at the playheads at the end I can say well no I want him a little bit lower right and now flash automatically adjusts and now if I hit control play it moves from there to there and so I can keep playing with that not only that I can take this curve this this curve here this motion guide and I can curve that and now I've got a curved path for my animation and that's one of the beauties of this new flash cs5 flash cs4 animation tools when you do an insert motion tween which we did before as opposed to a classic tween we can set that motion path really easily by just dragging and changing that you know i could try to see how that looks right and say okay i want that right that's pretty cool and not only that i can go and i can click on this guy right here or click on the the frame right here even and what I want to do is set easing. So I've clicked right here, and I'm going to set the easing. I'll drag, click, and drag that to 100. And so now you see how these dots on the motion paths kind of get close together at the end. That means it's going to slow down here at the end. So now if I hit Control Play, it kind of slows down at the end, right? So that's cool. So last but not least, we want to alter this guy even some more. So I'm going to go back to the beginning here and I've got the guy right here and I can adjust a lot of different things with him so I'm gonna use the cool 3d tool here and I'll click on the orange line and if I click on the orange line drag I can actually kind of free rotate him into a different um, arrangement so let's see I could do that right and then I could use the arrows on my keyboard to drag him over even some more maybe up some more and I could also get the scale tool hold on the corner there we go and make him even bigger so now he's going to scale in so now if I hit control play he starts to animate in but it's not exact he doesn't end up where I want so he starts off in this cool let's see here 3d tool type of place right but at the end of the animation it's not back to normal so I've got to go in and I've got to fix that so what I need to do is I need to at the end here I need to get my transform tool and where's that library transform okay transform panel not the transform tool this is the transform tool. I want the transform panel and I'm going to set the rotation back to zero and I'm going to set the, the 3d rotation all back to zero too X Y and Z and now I should have him in back to normal and the 3d rotation I'm going to click on him once again that transform and set each one of these back to zero and if I hit if I click now on the transform tool you'll see that X Y and Z are all set to zero rotation is set to zero and he's back in place and now if we hit control play you'll see that he does a, a completely different thing and um, and it's pretty interesting also another thing I could do is at the end I could scale him down even farther I'm gonna scale him down Let's see here hold down the shift key make him smaller maybe move him up a little bit and now see how I like that animation 
So that is a pretty cool motion tween with a 3D rotation and scale into position.